Lead Green Associate Practice Test. Question 1. What are the advantages for the environment of choosing a project site that has already been developed? A. Preserving open space. B. The site would have a greater development density. C. Local tax savings may be available. D. The site would be located near mass transit. Answer, A. A greenfield is a location that has either been utilized for agriculture or is undeveloped and in its natural condition. Question 2. What are the advantages of choosing a project site near densely populated areas? A. Increased availability of rainwater. C. Reduction of heat islands. C. More lenient zoning rules. D. Protection of undeveloped land. Answer, D. By stimulating growth in regions with existing infrastructure, project placement in a densely populated area conserves land and protects farming and animal habitat. Question 3. Which is a high-priority site? A. Area on or within 50 feet, 15 meters, of a wetland. B. Land with endangered habitat. C. Historic district. D. Previously developed land. Answer, C. Historic sites are considered high priority. Question 4. A homeowner in a warm region has chosen to rent a solar system rather than buy one. Which statement about that option is accurate? A. Leasing the system would allow the owner to participate in a demand response program. B. Leasing the system would decrease the home's electricity demand. C. Leasing the system would increase the home's energy efficiency. D. Leasing the system would offset a large upfront cost. Answer, D. In addition to leasing, some businesses can provide equipment installation at reduced or no cost, and the owner may buy the company's renewable power. Question 5. A school building uses power from the grid at night but generates electricity for the grid during the day using on-site solar panels, so there are no electricity bills for the school. This is an illustration of A. Net zero energy B. Zero waste C. Carbon neutrality D. Water balance Answer, A. No more energy from the electrical grid is used in net-zero energy projects than may be generated on-site by renewable energy sources. Question 6. What environmental problem is brought on by the usage of refrigerants in HVAC NR systems? A. Soil contamination. B. Groundwater contamination. C. Increasing greenhouse gas emissions. D. Increased CO2 indoors. Answer, C. Refrigerants have ozone depletion potential, ODP, and global warming potential, GWP, due to greenhouse gas emissions. Low values of each are best for refrigerant choices. Question 7. When may a project team need to think about raising the ventilation levels to enhance the quality of the interior air? A. During building commissioning. B. After the occupants have moved in. C. Before the occupants move in. D. Pre-design. Answer, D. A larger ventilation system could be necessary to increase ventilation. The system may need more energy to operate. These choices could be rendered obsolete by the time the structure is really being built. Question 8. Daylighting, natural ventilation, movable windows, and personal lighting controls are all features of buildings designed for cold climates. What more may be included into the design to enhance occupant control and comfort? A. Walk-off mats in all emergency exits. B. Ergonomic desks. C. Discounted transit passes. D. Bicycle racks near the building entrance. Answer, B. Ergonomic furniture and workstations are a way to improve occupant comfort. 
Question 9. Which goods would lessen the impact of cleaning chemicals on the environment? A. Environmental choice. B. Greeny. C. CRI. D. Green Label Plus. Question 10. Materials with minimal VOC emissions, grates in the entranceway, higher rated MRF filters, and air intake situated in an open air parking garage are all examples of project designs with an emphasis on constructing healthy buildings. Which of these design principles has a detrimental influence on the quality of indoor air? A. The materials with low VOC emissions. B. The grates used for the entryway. C. The higher rated MRF filters. D. The location of the air intakes. Answer, D. Air intakes should be located near fresh air sources and away from exhaust or smoking areas. Question 11. Which of the following does not aid in the identification of sensitive habitats? A. FEMA. B. The U.S. Code of Federal Regulations. C. The Nature Serve Heritage Program. D. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. E. A. C. Answer, E. ACE is the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy. ACE publishes an annual list of green cars. Question 12. Which benchmark is used to assess the minimal level of energy efficiency in lead homes and low-rise multifamily buildings? A. I codes. B. Energy Star for Homes. C. Oshri 62.1. D. Oshri 90.1. E. Sustainable Sites. Answer B. The test objectives call for knowledge of the LEED supporting standards. The criteria for energy efficiency in a LEED are based on Energy Star for Homes. Question 13. Which of the following is one of the tasks that integrative project team members complete together? A. Identifying opportunities for synergy. B. Applying for financing. C. Select a target certification level. D. Energy modeling. Answer A. Every team member is collected before beginning any design work, and every problem is discussed. Each team member will provide their area of expertise as well as any pertinent knowledge and data they may have. In order to find synergy between various tactics and systems, the team then examines the data and begins comparing notes. Question 14. A building owner in a hot environment want to have an airtight structure and a green roof for insulation. What would need to be considered as part of this plan throughout the integrative process? A. The green roof will increase the heat island effect. B. Bringing in additional fresh air for indoor air quality. C. Acoustic performance will be poor. D. If the building has extensive glazing cooling loads will increase. Answer B. A structure's interior atmosphere becoming stagnant is a drawback of a tight building envelope. To enhance air quality, more ventilation and fresh air must be introduced. However, more energy is required when ventilation is increased. Question 15. In a city, a developer is looking at suitable locations for a new office building. What is one of the first stages to become LEED certified? A. Setting construction material quantities. B. Discuss overlapping benefits. C. Convening a goal-setting workshop. D. Assigning roles and responsibilities. Answer C. Before any design work meet with the building owner to determine their goals for the BR. Project. Question 16. Which of the following is not true about lead interpretations? A. Lead interpretations can be applied to multiple projects. B. Lead interpretations are an opportunity to contribute to lead in a significant way. C. Lead interpretations are used to add new requirements to the lead rating system. D. Lead interpretations are reviewed by lead committees comprised of member-selected green building practitioners and USGBC staff.
Answer C. The lead rating system cannot be significantly altered or given additional standards via lead interpretations. Additionally, lead interpretations are not the recommended method for correcting mistakes in the lead grading systems and reference manuals. To address these concerns, USGBC offers clarifications, also known as addenda. Question 17. How long can a project team take after project completion to phase out any CFC-based refrigerants? A. 3 years. B. 2 years. C. 5 years. D. 4 years. Answer C. Question 18. What lead credit category honors construction projects on sites with development restrictions? close to a diversity of uses, and in moderately crowded areas, a. a. Smart location and linkage. b. Innovation. c. Location and transportation. d. Sustainable sites. Answer C. Question 19. What components make up each lead rating system? a. Third-party standards. B. Combination of credit categories. C. Impact categories. D. Interpretations. Answer B. There are certain requirements that projects must meet and a range of credits that projects may seek to obtain points within each of the credit categories. The project's level of lead certification is determined by the amount of points it receives. Question 20. Choosing goods that have been created with a sustainable design entails a. Source reduction b. Recycling c. Reuse c. Waste diversion Answer a. Source reduction reduces the materials brought into a building. This includes products that have reduced packaging and products developed with sustainable design principles. Question 21. What factors should be considered to choose the construction material for a project? Choose 3. A. The size of the company supplying the materials. B. The cost of the material. C. How long the material has been used in other projects. D. The environmental impact of extracting and manufacturing the material. E. The impact the material has on society. F. If the company is a USGBC member. Answer B. D. E. Cost is the economic part of the triple bottom line, environment as planet and social as people. Question 22. Regional priority credits are specific to A. Lead project type, schools, healthcare, data centers, etc. B. The state the project is located in. C. Lead credit category. D. Lead rating system family, B. D. Plus C. ID plus C, etc. Answer A. Each grading system has its own RP credits since each lead project type may have a variety of effects. For instance, if a warehouse has few tenants, it may not be given high priority for interior water consumption. Question 23. What solution for an entranceway makes a suitable material choice and allows for acceptable indoor air quality? A. Stone tiles extracted and manufactured locally. B. Low VOC rubber mat. C. Carpeted tile shipped from overseas. D. Wood flooring made in another country. Answer B. Grills, grates, or mats should be used in lead entryways to assist remove shoes as visitors enter. This keeps pollutants, dust, and grime out. Question 24. What are the environmental benefits of using salvaged wood flooring in a residential project? A. The wood flooring will have a lower cost since it did not have to be extracted from a forest. B. The wood flooring will have a lower installation cost. C. The wood flooring will reduce the demand for virgin resources. D. The wood flooring will increase the tax base of the local economy. Answer C. 
Salvaged materials reduce the demand for virgin materials and reduce waste. Flooring that is taken from a demo project can be reused elsewhere so that trees do not have to be cut down to supply wood for new flooring. Question 25. What elements influence the thermal comfort of an occupant? A. VOC levels, glare, and acoustics. B. Acoustics, ergonomics, and views. C. Temperature, humidity, and air movement. D. Daylighting, air monitoring, and cleanliness. Answer C. Question 26. When would a flush out happen in the project schedule? A. Prior to occupants moving in. B. Prior to the building water being turned on. C. After the building envelope is weather tight. D. After HVAC ducts have been sealed and protected. Answer A. To eliminate impurities, mechanical systems undergo a flush out using only outside air. Question 27. What attribute should recycled materials have in order to take advantage of synergies with regional materials? A. Lower life cycle costs. B. Remanufactured regionally. C. More durability. D. Low VOCs. Answer B. Only the choice of being remanufactured regionally would help with earning credit for regional slash locally BR. Sourced materials. Question 28. Some wood flooring recovered on-site from a renovation project was refurbished and reused on-site. What type of BR? Material is the wood flooring considered? Choose 2. A. Salvaged material. B. Virgin wood. C. Recycled content. D. Regional slash local material. Answer A. D. The flooring would be a salvaged material since it was found and used on site. This material would also be a regional slash local material since it came from on site. Question 29. An office space renter requests an open floor plan. What does one compromise this choice entails? A. The acoustics may be poor. B. The room will have decreased air quality. C. The space will not be able to include task lighting. D. Daylighting will be harder to achieve. Answer, A. No more energy from the electrical grid is used in net-zero energy projects than may be generated on-site by renewable energy sources. Question 30. What are the advantages of expanding the project's open space? Choose 2. A. Increasing rainwater infiltration. B. Increased durability of the overall project. C. More habitat for vegetation and wildlife. D. Reducing potable water use. Answer A. C. Increasing open space helps provide habitat for vegetation and wildlife, rainwater. Increasing open space helps provide habitat for vegetation and wildlife, rainwater management, and reducing the urban heat island effect. Thank you for watching.